Yes, Chair LaFaro. Present. Vice Chair Finnerty. Present. Secretary is here. Board Member Catalanato. Present. Board Member Neely. Present. Board Member Fulham. Present. And Board Member Lutsu is absent, so we have a quorum out here. Great, thank you. Can you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just a little housekeeping. We don't have a very full house, but in case of emergency, just exit the rear doors, go down the stairs and out the front door. Uh, and when you give testimony, <coughs> please just give us your name and affiliation on the application. So we have Tuckahoe Orchard. Do, do you have proper notice, Council? We do, Madam Chair. We do. Okay. So Tuckahoe, Kate, you want to read that into the record? Please take notice that in accordance with local law number 417 of 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 6 p.m. at Town Hall, 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and via video conferencing to consider the site plan application entitled 720 Butter Lane. That's what I'm going in? Okay. Yes. The applicant has requested a phase review. She's reading Is that 720. It? Oh, you're no, reading 720. Yeah, Tuckahoe Orchard. Oh, we're going out of order. Okay. Tuckahoe Orchard? I don't see that one. Let's see. I see. First. That's Craig, but I'll do it. Well, that's me. Please right, take notice it. that in accordance with local law number 417 of 2022, <coughs> a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 6 p.m. at Town Hall, 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and via video conferencing to consider the pre-application entitled Tuckahoe Orchard LLC. The application is for a two-lot planned residential development cluster plan with 25% open space of a 2.786 acre vacant property situated in the R40 zoning <coughs> district and New York State agriculturally sensitive area located at 268 North McGee Street, Tuckahoe, Suffolk County tax map number 900-129-2-11.2. Thank you. Wayne? Good evening, board members. Wayne Bruin, O'Shea, Marcensing, and Bruin on behalf of Tuckahoe Orchard LLC. Principal Jose, Jose Molina is here with us tonight. As the notice indicate, we're here for a pre-application uh, uh, for a two-lot subdivision. Uh, the plans, the alternative plans, a standard yield map and a cluster map are over here on my right, I believe number one on your agenda. As noticed, uh, its property is located on the easterly side of North McGee Street, approximately 2,500 feet north of Sabonic Road in the hamlet of Tuckahoe. Property has 2.786 acres, and we're in the R40 zoning district. We're not in any uh, particular um, overlay district. The westerly portion of the site is, has been cleared, um, and the easterly portion is wooded. There are significant steep slopes. What I'd like you to do is maybe um, this might help. You do have the aerial photograph that was up on, on that, but I'm going to submit an aerial photograph from 1984, and you can see this comes off the town GIS. You can see this property was disturbed um, many years back, and if you go back and you'll see the 76 aerials, and I think it involved sand mining operations that extended over two adjacent properties. And if I may, um, essentially, so this portion is currently cleared, but back then, was cleared pretty much almost to a point of 200 feet into the top of what would be this slope. You can see this significant steep slope here, and I believe that's a result of the mining that took place maybe 50 years ago. Um, it has been uh, revegetating, 
um, that area, but those slopes still exist. So uh, through time, this property before my client, um, there was an operation here that had um, somewhat of a commercial operation. My client has been using it more or less for nursery stock. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, nursery stock. Um, you can see some plantings still there. Immediately to our south is a very narrow lot that was owned by John DeStefano, a house built in, in about 2001-ish. Um, and you can see it has a long driveway. It extends all the way to the rear of the property. The property immediately to our east is owned by the town of Southampton. That was a dedicated open space, community preservation fund open space. Um, and we have two maps, the standard yield map, two lots, and then we have a cluster um, for the R40 zone, not in any aqua for protection overlay, the minimum open space requirement is 25%. So we located open space on the rear portion of the lot, primarily the, the, the portion that it remains wooded. Um, and just for development purposes, there is public water available along McGee Street. So um, if you have any questions, be happy to answer. How far, um, does the village still have a pistol range in that area? Yes. Yes. Um, so if you, 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 know, have, you the have to go to the broader picture, but they yeah, have the property that the village owns. Maybe uh, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, let me just actually take this one thing off here. Good. What are you looking for, Wayne? So you see the pistol sort of just where, to the right of your cursor or to the east is, is the development, which is part of the village of Southampton facility, including a, a pistol range. That's the pistol range there? Yeah. That's all in the uh, Tuckahoe Woods yeah. open space areas. All you know, uh, I was actually in the town attorney's office when the town purchased the Damiano's property, which is where your cursor is for open space yeah. purposes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Wayne, the house to the south, that isn't actually encroaching, is it? That's just the way that. According to our survey, they have a planter that's encroaching on our property. Okay. And we're going to be reaching out to them to have that removed. I mean, just looking at the area. No, it they, looks they, if you look <coughs> at the GIS, the, the, the property lines aren't accurate. Um, okay. But if you look at our survey, you can see it's they're literally on the property line. The planter associated with their deck is, is about a right. foot onto our property. Any other questions from the board? Is there anyone in the um, audience who wishes to speak to this application? Seeing none, Zoom. is there anyone on Zoom? No one on Zoom. Okay. okay, then we'll close with a 10 day written comment period. Okay. Motion by Dennis, second by second. Craig. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention. Six in favor, one absent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We're moving on to the Long Island Resource Corp or Tesla. I'll be Dennis. Do you want to use it? Yeah, three years. I have it on my iPad. Yeah. Do we have notice, sufficient we notice? Do we do. Okay, please take notice that in accordance with local law number 417-2022, a public hearing will be held by the South End Town Planning Board on Thursday, October 13, 2022 at 6 p.m. Town Hall, 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and via video conferencing to consider the pre-submission conference entitled Long Island Resource Corp. Tesla. The proposed site plan, special exception applications for a motor vehicle dealer use in an existing 19,200 42 square foot building located on a 2.9 acre property situated in the highway business zone district at 54 Monto Highway and Watermill, tax map number 9132 7. Uh, good evening. My name is John Bennett, Bennett <coughs> 212 Windmill Lane, South Hampton. Uh, Lisa Poyer from Quinn Forks is here this evening. Uh, this is uh, a public hearing, which is primarily for the purposes of 
having uh, any public input. Uh, Lisa is going to give a, just a quick sketch of what's going on here. And should somebody be saying to me, don't touch the button? What is that? I don't know. It's like it says. Don't touch it, John. <laughs> it says, don't touch it. Of course, everybody don't touches don't it. Don't fool around. It's sitting here next to the. See what happens if you touch it. It might no. <laughs> Good evening, Lisa Poyer with Twin Forks Permits on behalf of the applicant. Uh, the property is located in a highway business zone and Anthony has the aerial up. Uh, you have highway business zone on the properties to cross the street to the north as well as to the immediately adjacent property to the west. The properties to the east and south are zoned CR60. The current tenant there is Colette's Furniture. The prior tenants were Pier 1, which was there for many years. Prior to that, it was Flying Point Nightclub. And long, long ago, it was a bowling alley. So the planning board last saw this application as a full site plan back in 2001, which was when Pier 1 took over the entire building and the nightclub was terminated. The current application is a pre-submission site plan application for a special exemption for a motor dealership. <coughs> the Proposed tenant is Tesla, which will be going in there. Um, the existing building will be renovated along with the interior and the exterior. There will be no changes to the footprint. It will remain at the 19,242 square feet. Some additional garage doors will be added for access for <coughs> service. The vast majority of the building, about 80% of it, will be dedicated towards service of the Teslas. A small portion will be towards a showroom area and a log lounge slash office area for the staff. Thanks to the foresight from the planning board on other applications on the corner of Flying Point and Montauk Highway, they had, you guys had requested uh, the cross access easements along the rear and as part of the other application development that is actually constructed and so it's in place which will help alleviate any potential traffic issues for vehicles coming to the site, they can pull in immediately off of Montauk Highway with the right-hand turn, and those service vehicles or you know, the tractor trailers that may come in with the cars can easily exit with that service entrance, I'm sorry, this, the rear cross-access easement and go right onto Flying Point Road, to hit the traffic light and go westbound back onto Montauk, or I guess County Road 39 at that point. Okay. Um, so it's going to be the second Tesla dealership in Suffolk County. There's another one which is in Smithtown, which is about 45 miles away. And then there's one other one on Long Island, which is in Syosset. So they're looking to establish a dealership on the East End where there's many clients. And we're just here for the public input. Lisa, any um, charging stations here? There will be charging stations for the dealership in the rear of the building. Okay. Will they, they're, they be open to the public or just? No. No? Just for clients. Just for clients. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the board? Well, one of the challenges of these auto, these dealerships on the highway, as you know, is the vehicles tend to migrate out to the 50 yard, 50 foot transitional front yard. So hopefully your no clients display. are aware of that. The, the model of a Tesla dealership is that they'll have a couple cars on site for you to look at, but you can't actually order a car from the dealership. You need to do that from a computer right. somewhere else. That's their model, <laughs> unique. Any other questions? That's it. No. Any? Yeah, I, I, I do, Madam Chair. Yes, um, Gloria. It's time that I heard that a majority of the space is going to be used for service, and I don't understand what kind of service would be provided and whether there are any environmental concerns it's when cars come in, they need regular maintenance. Um, if just with, you know, changing the tires, testing of the batteries, all of the batteries will be stored in appropriate <coughs> containers. There will only be a few batteries on site at a given time. Most of them don't need to be replaced. Uh, if they do, then they can order them in. It's, you know, just standard maintenance on, a, on any vehicle associated with Electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Moving up a tire, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we had. I, I just, I don't understand um, what, you know, like, do you have to change the oil, for example, at 
it's yeah. not a combustible it's vehicle, so it won't have any oil to change. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So. There, there's a detailed analysis that we can prepare and submit with the full site plan application. And I think, again, maybe at the full application time, we had asked about storage of batteries. Mm -hmm. Right. I we think can that provide was brought that up as an issue. Mm -hmm. We brought that back to the client and it was detailed. Right. Okay. It's no fully sense. electric, uh, Gloria. It's a fully electric I, I vehicle. I realize that, I, and I don't, I honestly don't know what that means. No, no gasoline storage. Batteries. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just, I'm just saying we, we, need, we should look at the environmental potential yeah. <coughs> for what will be done there. Any other questions? Anyone from the audience want to speak to this application? Seeing none, anyone on Zoom? No one, on, no, one on no one on Zoom. Okay, it's a 30-day written comment period because it's a pre-submission conference. So we'll close with a 30-day written comment period. Motion. Motion by Dennis. Second. Second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Six in favor. One absent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, I'm Great. 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 The next one. <coughs> the next is 720 Butter Lane. Thank you. Some butter. We have notice. Yes, we do, Matt. Okay. Which one's butter? We have notice. We actually all we got all mixed up here. Um, oh, I can do that one again. This one? If you like. Okay. We have some elevations. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you. Hi, Carl. We just have to read just this into the record. Oh, sorry. Please take notice that in accordance with local law number 417 of 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, October 13, 2022 at 6 p.m. at Town Hall 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and via video conferencing to consider the site plan application entitled 720 Butter Lane. The, application, uh, um, the applica applicant has requested a phase review where proposed phase one includes the conversion of the existing office trailer to hemp processing, legalization of the existing refrigerated produce storage building slash trailer, and proposes the removal of one existing trailer to the south of the existing farm stand with eight proposed proposed employee parking spaces to the north of the farm stand and phase two includes uh, phase two includes pr uh, proposals for PV panels on the southern portion of the existing metal barn a 900 square foot concrete apron with an overhang a 120 square foot concrete equipment pad Area for SC, SCDHS approval, that's Suffolk County, um, what's that? Department, Department, Health 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 Department of Health Center approval, sanitary system, thank you. Proposes uh, the removal of three existing trailers to the west of the existing farm stand with five proposed employee parking spaces to the south of the farm stand with both phases showing eight parking spaces dedicated to the existing farm stand located at 720 Butter Lane, Bridgehampton, Town of Southampton, Suffolk County tax map number 900-50-1-8.6. Thank you. It's yours, Carl. Good evening. Good Members evening. of the board, Madam Chair, good to see you all. Carl Benacosta for the applicant. <coughs> we were here uh, several months ago, went back in July, considering phase one. And as you recall, phase one of the plan required involved legalizing an existing office trailer for use in hand processing and removing uh, an existing uh, trailer. Those, I'm happy to report, thanks to the quick action of this board, uh, my client was able to take, obtain all required licensure from the state. I'll wait till you have that. Yeah. So phase one is completed, thanks to your agreeing to waive the public hearing and your quick action, uh, he's duly licensed for that operation by the state. <laughs> So he's operating under that temporary uh, trailer, which you approved. And if you recall, phase two was to create a more permanent uh, uh, a structure and operation for him processing. Uh, do you have elevations in front of you now? Is there yes. a second page? And there should be a floor plan there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. So the site plan is pretty straightforward. Now we move to the point where the operations uh, for hemp processing will come out of that temporary trailer that we approved in July, that you approved in July, and go into this uh, metal-sided barn, that larger structure. 
That is existing, yes. Removing and accompanying with that will be the removing uh, a removal of three trailers. You can see noted in red on the site plan. And in addition to that, we are formalizing today the parking for the operations, the farm stand and employees, as well as a location for proposed sanitary, noted towards the lower right-hand corner of the site plan. Can you point out what trailers are being removed, Carl? Certainly. So this trailer was removed. This is phase one. I see, yeah, yeah. The dot, very finely dotted. Yeah, yeah. This is phase one. Yeah, yeah. There's a trailer here that was removed. It's not there. And this is phase two, and these three trailers here, Got which are known as storage containers in phase one, will okay. be also be removed. And they're going to be removed because the existing uh, barn is going to serve the, the, that purpose. So that means we're left with the greenhouse, an office trailer, and the building. The office trailer will ultimate, that's what's existing now as the hemp processing unit. <coughs> That will be folded into the barn in phase two. So that is the, the reason we did this as a two-phase approach was to, so he could continue his operations in, with the use of that office trailer as a temporary processing okay. structure. Okay, but that will go away? That will go away, yes. And the hemp okay. processing goes into the barn. What? Okay. Yeah, sure. Ben Chalif, Chalif and Rogers, um, just to clarify that it, the, the, that hemp processing use will go away from the office trailer, but he would very much like to retain it for uh, 20C food processing use, which is licensed by the state. So uh, since it's, uh, that's actually it's one of its former uses, so it would convert back to that. Um, and would likely get moved, but we're still figuring that part out. But it's, it's well back from the road as, as it is now. And then the farm stand, which is towards the front in between the two areas of parking, would also is there and would stay there. Thank you, Matt. Sorry, I misunderstood. Yes, the use would be moved. Okay. Can you talk about these? Are they solar panels that uh, are proposed? Yeah, Ben, do you want to talk about the, the PV panel? Photo photovoltaic panels, yes. So we're still, for his uh, electricity consumption, um, we're still working out with the um, supplier exactly what the array would be, but I've, I've indicated it here sort of schematically on the south roof as basically maximized um, on the south roof. It's on the second page of the documents I gave you. Um, as to the number of kilowatts exactly, we don't really know yet. and. But um, it's, it's shown basically maximized. Um, there would also be uh, a very small concrete equipment pad somewhere probably on the south side of the building just for um, air conditioning, condensers, that sort of thing. Um, and then we will have to be uh, making application to the health department for uh, a low nitrogen sanitary system for the um, well, a low nitrogen sanitary system for the um, small bathroom that will be in this existing barn, that will be added to this existing barn, but then there will also <coughs> be, um, I believe, a process water uh, holding tank that the health department will require too, but we don't quite know what the health department needs as far as that goes. But, um, I think that's everything other than, uh, right, and then on the east side, uh, we're proposing a, a new roofed uh, porch, if you will, basically just a, a concrete slab with, with an open um, roof in the same material, matching material to uh, provide cover at the doorways and um, some, some area for um, loading, unloading, that sort of thing at the, at the door. We're reducing and uh, removing the existing large um, double sliding door that's now at the front of the building and, and changing that to something that's indicated there on the east um, as some sort of glass roughly <coughs> those are seven foot doors um, to let a little bit of lat natural light in his entry slash office area and um, we're removing the double sliding doors on the northern part of the east elevation and changing that to a rolling overhead door 
and then I'm sure um, that, um, well, we'll come back to you or submit a revision when we actually have the uh, photovoltaic plan a little more decided. We're also uh, proposing to remove the existing utility pole that's towards the southeast corner of the property and change that to underground service. And I think that's highlights. What is the unlabeled um, room on the upper on the floor plan, the upper left? Uh, that's all part of the same equipment sorry, storage. Should, maintenance. Yes, equipment and storage and and maintenance equipment. Um, I should label it better. Now we know. Thank now you. Know. Thank you, Chris. Question answered. <laughs> Anthony, do we have a specific code for photo? Voltec for solar solar panels on a commercial structure. I thought we something got mentioned in the agenda. I, I believe they're working on their, their the, solar legislation, solar regs. So I have to go back and look because yeah. I know we we met we've Michael mentioned Angelo, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that was all in conjunction so, with batteries, though. No, right? Or was so yeah, I, I was know. gonna. I would think you would end up putting in one or two um, battery, sto storage? battery storage units. So. Um, I would imagine because I think he'll have more capacity than, than he would be able to sell back um, or that he would even be using at any one time. So, um, yeah, I think well, I think a battery. for rainy days, you mm -hmm. need the storage. Exactly. Uh, hurricanes, the, yeah. Tesla battery. And nice. Tesla makes them. Not that I mean. <laughs> And then um, the hemp, hemp um, cannabis. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gloria. Go ahead, Gloria. Is there going to be any food processing at the site? Food processing. I kind of thought they were actually selling some things that were made there from the farm stand. Um, right. They they were in the past. Um, that that was what we were talking about. The existing um, <clears throat> office trailer that he now has permission to use for hemp processing. When that use returns to the barn, then he would like to convert uh, the use of that office trailer back to. Um, state approved 20C food processing. Because okay, I, I thought I just, talk, I heard you just talk about a bathroom, but it'll include the food processing as well. Um, oh, is the sanitary system? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, uh, with the health department, I think we'll, we'll have to tell us whether we're going to need a, a grease trap and a separate system there. It, it, it somewhat mm -hmm. depends on his use. Yeah. So that, that needs to be included in the site plan. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I th I thought I'd covered it in that it's included in that dotted area all the way to the south. Well, unfortunately, I'm not at town hall, so ah. I'm not seeing the that you're showing. Okay. Well, I can. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, I, I sort of generically uh, described an area that would be for all Suffolk County Department of Health Services approved sanitary systems. But with well, right next to the parking, is right. Uh, correct. Mm -hmm. And Are the you trailer to do, uh, ADA parking for the farm stand right up front. Um, not that I could see in the code. Um, that I the, the section of the code that I <coughs> quoted there, um, it just says that there need to be five cars minimum provided. Um, there's no. Um, it's gravel right now, and there's um, but no, I don't think the code actually. Requires that because it's going to be operating on the temporary farm stand permit, right? The farm stand will be. Yeah. Yes, that's what that parking know. is for, right? No, that trig. We haven't done any farm stand site plans. I can think of. Yeah, I'm writing down the ADA parking question because I, I, that's a good question. Yeah. I, I don't I know. We'll check it. I mean, we could we have room. We could certainly <coughs> yeah, yeah. One wider required, yeah. with a five foot aisle next to it. But you um, might not have to. But the but the gravel, I'm not sure how that would work. You might have to do a hard surface yeah. on the one. Right. Well, will any of this be uh, used year-round? I, I don't know how hemp production is, is handled. Because I just heard Dennis say it's a temporary farm stand. No, that uh, the farm, farm stand, stand part, yes, that, that's seasonal. Um, the, but yes, there will, there will be uh, more year-round use of, of the barn as, <coughs> as there is now, but, um, but in a different use. For hemp, pro hemp processing year round in the barn. Um, is the food processing trailer hooked into a septic system currently, or is it pumped out because it's a temporary 
Uh, well, it's not being used for food processing now. When it was. When it was. <laughs> when it will be. <laughs> there was a drywall. It was. It was. Okay. Uh, it. Um, yeah. No. It. It didn't have a proper system. Okay. So that'd be. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be great if everything fit in. That's why I was asking about this section here. If everything could mm -hmm. fit in the same building, um, ideally, but you know, it's a consideration. It's it's a consideration. Mm -hmm. And then, can you um, share the the hemp processing um, equipment? Is it a dehydration freeze dryer? Can I share with you what the equipment is? <laughs> Um, well, we can let the experts speak about that. Would you like to? David Falkowski, uh, Open Minded Organics. Uh, the hemp processing, um, there's many different processes that are using. Um, we use our greenhouses to, to dry things um, as far as turning hemp and cannabis into <coughs> usable products it could be just simple packaging um, there could be tincturing the way many herbal tinctures are done we could uh, infuse them into oils um, there's actually solventless processes where you actually just press the product and the resins come out and those can be packaged or further turned into gummies edibles oils uh, just notable that the raw flour itself uh, akin to dairy milk just can't be released to the open market. The purpose for licensure, GMP, CGMP audits, inspections uh, to ensure food safety. Uh, just to address quickly the, uh, the food use, the 20C licensure. Unfortunately, the way the state has set this up, uh, traditional food processing cannot occur in the same license pre premises as hemp and cannabis processing, you know, because uh, of track and trace protocols. Uh, and all of these other things. Dairy too. You, you, you can't have it in the same <laughs> space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm open to flexibility on placing uh, 20 seafood processing in the property as logistically necessary and obviously hooking it up to appropriate things. We just want to make sure we're not encumbered with a quarter million, half million dollar build out for a kitchen that is absolutely necessary and customary to the majority of uh, farmers uh, in the Northeast here specifically. We definitely experienced post-COVID a severe decline in fresh produce sales. Uh, matter of fact, uh, many of the insulting statements sent our way is why don't you make more zucchini bread? And I simply said, because I'm a farmer and I grow more than one zucchini plant. <laughs> Again, I just want to reiterate, I would not ask for, for any of these permitted uses to be permitted if I didn't need to. My life is complicated enough. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So this was the one referral made was to the fire marshal, and I believe you have his response. Um, I think you can see his one response was that access for fire safety vehicles and fire suppression vehicles wouldn't be precluded. If anything, we're removing structures that were precluded those two electric poles being removed, so that's not a concern. And then he asked for the specific use of in hemp processing uh, the uh, operations and the utilities used. He would need further information to determine whether or not setbacks or specific uh, requirements related to fire protection and, and safety code are required. To be honest, the state is still sort of rolling those out on this. As you know, this, this industry is in its infancy. So we are closely monitoring that and, of course, we'll comply with whatever they require and whatever the fire marshal requires. Okay. Um, you questions? have the floor plan in front of you. I just want to point that uh, from an aesthetic perspective, a lot of this farm equipment that is going to be stored in here is now stored outside, so that will be internal, internal storage, which certainly benefits both the equipment and the, this stuff. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the uh, audience? Yes. Yes, please. <coughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Thomas Addison. I live at 636 Butter Lane, which is directly to the south of the uh, property in question. 
Um, I just want to paint a picture of the character of the neighborhood that now exists. I think maybe 30 years ago it was primarily farmland, but today it's farmland with a lot of houses bordering it uh, to the north, south, across the street with a uh, cul-de-sac. There's a <laughs> yeah, Lori. Lori. through there. Uh, there's a school across the street. Um, so anything that this the farm does is going to have a profound effect on uh, a residential area, uh, houses with families and children, and a school. So I'd like you to keep that in mind as you analyze the uh, proposal. Another issue I want to bring up is the timing of the notice. I only received it uh, less than two weeks ago, maybe October 4th or 5th by certified mail. Only, I think, because I'm a year, one of the few year-round residents who lives here. <coughs> Butter Lane and Rich Hampton does not get postal service delivered to their houses. You have to have a post office box at the post office. A lot of the houses, I believe, on the street are second residences. People don't live there full time. They may not have a local address. If mail is delivered to the house, it's immediately returned because there's no post office. So a lot of people haven't even been informed of this. And it's a big project. And uh, I think it's only fair that you delay whatever decision you make tonight until all the affected neighbors have a chance to contact their attorneys and really analyze what's going on here. I don't know much about hemp processing, but I can tell you one byproduct of it is a very noxious, skunk-like odor that has permeated into my yard, my neighbor's yard, and the neighbor to him to the south. On some days, it's so strong, you think somebody on there is smoking a reefer the size of a telephone pole. You can also smell it sometimes on Scuttle Hole Road, which is almost a mile north of the property. Now this is, that's a fact, that's a byproduct of it. And from moving the production from a small trailer to a warehouse that's over 5,000 square feet, you have to ask the question, what is going to happen? Is, will there be more equipment, uh, machinery? Uh, will the smells and the odors get even worse so that more of the neighborhood is affected? Um, we just need, the neighborhood needs a lot more time to analyze the proposal and ask pertinent questions that are you know, only fair to ask how it affects our quality of life. Now Dave has been a good neighbor, I grant that, and I'm sure he means, to, means well, and I'm, I'm just hoping that we can all reach an equitable solution so that everybody's happy. I'm certainly not denying his right to farm within the law, confines of the law, he does that. Um, but I just think we all need a lot more information before any serious uh, resolution and decision can be made. Is, uh, Council, is there any um, ability to send notices digitally for people in, well, I know I live in Bridgehampton and there is no mail delivery. You have to go to the post office. I have, I mean, I have affidavits of mailing. I don't have them with me now. Patty has mm -hmm. them, but they, every, all the notices were properly done pursuant to the code. I mean, could they right. go beyond that if they wanted yeah. to? I'm, I'm just ask. asking the no, question. There's a requirement. Yeah. They're ma the thing is that the notices are mailed, and so if, if you they go, go to, to your house, post they're office, they're going to be returned. No, they're based yeah. off the tax roll. Oh, well, I. I don't know. All the houses have P.O. boxes. Right. I just know a lot of people didn't get them. Didn't the get a Neighbors notice. I've talked to, I had to email them the notices. And okay. Within the time frame of October 4th, they hardly gave me enough time to come to town hall, mm -hmm. look at the plans. Um, I've talked to other neighbors who said they didn't have time to contact their attorneys. I didn't have time really to engage my attorney. So a lot more time is need on, needed on this. And, okay. on, you know, I feel we can reach an equitable solution for all parties involved. We just need to know what's happening. Sure. You know, from a trailer to 5,000 square feet with a concrete equipment pad and solar panels, this, is, this sounds like a big operation. So I don't know, you know, it's not just the trailer. It's, a, you know, going to be more of a, actually more of a manufacturing facility. And doesn't that bring up the issue of, manufacturing versus agricultural and it's, isn't that a zoning issue questions that I'm asking that's all yeah well to be clear the purpose of a public hearing is to hear okay not to decide and sure. there'll be how long of a public comment period for writing Jackie what's an agricultural construction period 
30, we can make it 30 days. Yeah, yeah. Probably 30 days a month. Okay, well. Okay, all your points are well taken. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Steve uh, Corcoran? Do you want it? No? no. He, he said what you were going to say? Okay, good. Um, I would just point out that he's, um, he's my property manager. He's hearing impaired, but he can smell. <laughs> so he smells that skunk stuff, right? Yeah. Um, Michael? Michael? Yes? Yeah. And yeah, your last name is Mitchell? Muchka. Muchka. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Oh, that's a K. Okay. Uh, hi. Just want to say a couple things. I'm from Pennsylvania. Came out here about 20 years ago. I think this is an exciting, really dynamic area. The reason, one of the reasons it is we've got small businesses you're not going to see anywhere on the planet. You just won't. As far as kids, uh, it's great that the kids around here grew up to see real farms because they're going away. People wanted to live not in the cities. They wanted to move to the country. They wanted to move to the farmland. Now they've encroached on the farmland or shared the farmland for residential purposes. So that's what they did. And it's allowed. You've allowed it. Everybody's allowed it. Now there's going to be problems between agricultural use and residential use. It's going to happen all over. It's happening all over the place. So A, this farm smells, ten, it's an organic farm. It smells 10 times better than any farm I've ever been on. There's no cattle. The buildings are going to get less buildings. Now, the buildings you're talking about, this giant facility, can, can is you already there. Address the board, please. I'm sorry. The, the buildings are already there. There are going to be less of those structures, temporary and other ones. There'll be less of those as time goes on, as you prove this process. So it gets better and better. Um, the nature of farming is that there are sights, smells, sounds, tractors. But in this farm, there's no pesticide. There's no nothing. It's clean. So this isn't like an atomic power plant or something like that. This is a really clean, really thought out thing. These guys are doing a good job. I do a lot of contracting all over the East Coast, and these guys are doing a really good job. Can I ask you where you live? Yeah, I live in Sorry, so you're not next. Sorry, sir, sir. There's no, there's not a back and forth. We can't do that. They can't pick it up on the microphone, and it's not. On the I'm sorry. Okay, no, he lives in Sag Harbor. That's the address. Sag Harbor, yeah. So you support farmers, farmers, farming, yeah. Yeah, I came out here for the same farm. reason. There, 20 years ago, there was, there was somewhat, it was a little different area. I thought I wanted to get, I, I did some farming when I was a kid. And I lived in the cities in Pennsylvania, at Rust Belt. And so I grew up in factories. And of course, I always dreamed about going back to the farm. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, 20 years ago, I had a chance to do some contracting, some renovation out here. I did a couple of units of Dune Alpha, and I thought, hey, I like this place. I'm going to stick around. And it's just, it grew on me after a while. I really liked it. I still have a place in Pennsylvania, and I have to drive through some not-so-good-smelling farms to get there, eight hours of that. <coughs> but, so to me, this place is really, I mean, this is a, a really good thing for everybody. Good. Plus, there's, look how many people. I, I've driven by this farm several times a week and I see the different <coughs> people working there and there's scads of people working so I mean they don't always stay very long because it's not for everybody it's tough farming's tough and so um, they can't cut the mustard they go away you gotta get new ones and you see just the rotate but there's always I don't know 10 or 15 people there. so that's as much as most retail stores so okay, anyhow, that's all you I have to say. You get your point. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not allowed to say anything else. No, yes. I, my name's not on the list. But no, but come up and give me your name. My name's Thomas Gilmore Ayers the third. Thomas Gilmore? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, Ayers the third. Um, I'm the guy you smell down the road. Uh, I, I'm uh, the directing manager of Big Sky Ranch Holdings, LLC. AKA Nova's Ark Project. We also got our conditional cultivators license. We're located down the road by Scuttle Hole. Ah. Um, so we're the ones you smell over there. <laughs> what are we smelling? Uh, marijuana. Uh, we, we're doing recreational marijuana. We are Where? also. Where are you located? 
Uh, exactly, right on the corner of Millstone and Scuttle Hole Road. No, Nova's, you know, Nova's uh, where they have Nova's the sheep, are, sheep no, grazing I'm, I'm at the. Talking about Scuttle Hole and Butter. That's where it's. Not. All right, right up the road from us. Yeah, but I think it came from today. Okay. Um, the growing season of uh, marijuana plant, it is only four months that the marijuana plant smells before it's harvested and brought inside. The, when a plant is in its infancy, it doesn't have that smell until it starts developing the flower. Then we got a pungent smell. Um, and it's only three or four months before harvest and taken away. So the rest of the year, uh, as far along as this processing goes and smells from processing, it moves inside. Uh, there's carbon filters that are involved in all this processing. So air that's coming out of the facility will be filtered through. There won't be any smell. Okay. Um, so. Okay, well that's an education. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we are also doing organic regenerative farming. No chemicals at all. Uh, we're doing farming like our great-great-grandparents used to do with uh, no-till. Uh, it's, and it's working. Uh, brought in worms. It's amazing. No chemicals. It, it, the cost that they tell you about doing organics is not true, that it's more expensive to do. Uh, I got a quote for our nutrients for about 25 grand. I spent, with our regenerative farming, the practices, we've spent under $1,000 for fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And just, we're feeding bugs. That's what we're doing. Essentially, we're feeding bugs. And so, okay. and that's, that's thank, my piece. Thank you, <laughs> thank Mr. You so much. Thank you. Did, uh, Dave, do, do you want to address anything about the odors? Are you going to be putting any charcoal filters uh, to yeah, so. take the skunk away? Yeah, and I, I just wanted to bring up just a couple of clarifications. Uh, you know, with, with, with the photovoltaics, uh, I'm on a demand meter. Uh, most residencies, <laughs> don't understand this, but basically mm -hmm. I turn on all the lights in the house for 15 minutes from the barn. This meter ratchets up and stays there for the rest of the month because the municipality has to have that money on demand at all times. Um, we're also trying to meet mandates and initiatives put forward by the state, just like Tesla here, for renewable energies and also for resilience on farms. <coughs> you brought up, yes, there will be battery packs um, mm -hmm. in the state of a hurricane. Uh, people come to farms, and it's important for us to have our walk-in coolers running and our production capabilities to pack food, provide safe uh, workspaces for our employees, etc. As to the odor, uh, as Tom here shared, there are multiple cultivation sites throughout the town. Uh, this was a little enlightening. I saw some eyebrows go up. Let us know that the property directly to the west uh, and, and just adjacent to Mr. Addison's property, uh, they too are licensed for hemp and actually grew acreage much more than I have in the past. Um, so there are, we can't necessarily point fingers in one direction. Well, what we can do is acknowledge an industry and together as a community, a board, and neighbors figure out ways to, to cohabitate. Um, I will say when it comes to cultivation odors, this is really about cultivation, not processing odors. Once it's dry and brought inside, you don't have two acres of these plants fluorescing outdoors. You know, this is all now captured. Um, so this, this really isn't a concern of like filtration in these facilities. That's really more of a concern in some of the cultivation facilities. That being said, um, you know, in the future, you know, the town might want to consider how, uh, which will happen, I'm not saying myself, but other entities. Uh, we all see what's happening with the Office of Cannabis Management, uh, and there's, you know, there's a big rush right now um, on how uh, maybe they, they look at um, these, the way we handle uh, odors and other mitigating things. And there are solutions that are out there and those, those will be coming down the road. Um, but you know, just to be able to have the opportunities to continue to be a farmer, provide for my family, my employees and my community, uh, even in these early days that may be a little awkward, uh, there are long-term goals to meet energy sustainability, uh, to become an even better neighbor than we've already been said to be. Uh, and to the point of the schools, uh, I have a degree in early childhood education. I'm a pretty cool dad, my eight-year-old says. Uh, I also give many tours annually to homeschool groups throughout the region, schools down the street, across the street, and across town. The number one thing they may be concerned about hemp, cannabis, marijuana, all these things, is that are they still gonna be able to tour the farms? It's not because they're scared of this, so let's not this be about um, our conceptions of a crop, and let's really keep it to the facts of the matter, how community members, agronomists, and all of us were looking for solutions to continue to move forward and be viable. 
Thank you. Great. Thank you. Can Thank you, you just share the um, the three to four month window um, of when the crop is harvested? Yeah. Usually, uh, so the plants in a vegetative state uh, usually start to switch into their flowering state. Think High Times Magazine uh, in late August. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really at that time where some of the, the larger odors begin to emanate uh, until around this time in October when harvest has ceased. Okay. Um, there may, may be some minor rem remnants of things are driving greenhouses, but again, once it's all brought in, it's, it's bagged. It's in enclosed facilities worked with in substantially smaller amounts. You know, we're not talking about one acre here. We're talking about a bag this big being opened inside in a facility, uh, akin to somebody having some bad lunch and stomach problems. <laughs> about three months. August, three, three September, August October. September, October. Yeah. Yeah. And again, there are multiple cultivation sites throughout Long Island in New York. So, you know, to say it's, it's one specific, I think it really behooves us all to move forward, you know, with some policy along with the state so we can address these issues without it being restrictive. Because there's good actors and there's bad actors, and it's already been shared tonight that we're a good actor. And I'm just asking for the opportunity, like you've been working with me so far, that I can continue to be viable. And uh, I didn't bring the camera crews this time. The documentary's done. <laughs> Thanks for educating yeah, us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Is Anytime. It, I, is hemp a deer, deer resistant crop? It is not. Uh, no. they, they enjoy it. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> <bet> they do. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, we even see deer now pulling potatoes out of unprotected fields. Okay. Wow. Um, my garlic uh, in unprotected fields has been trampled. I, I really am sad to say that uh, open acreage, as in no fencing, agricultural fencing, really is not an option for, for farmers these days, just be, our lack of biological corridors and habitat and, mm -hmm. and management of the, of the herd. So what do you do to, to protect your crop from deer and, and sure. insects? Sure, so we, you know, we had put in for permits and, you know, we deer were, we, we put in deer fencing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I've seen deer jump through a hole one foot square in a fence. Mm -hmm. I've also seen them jump over an eight foot fence with enough of a runway. Um, but, uh, and the fencing also adds to security plans. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Anybody else from the audience want to speak? Yeah, well, you have to come yeah. up to the yeah. podium, yeah. Tom, yeah. because of the audio equipment, oh, okay. so please. So, hey, can you just go into Wait. a little bit more? Wait till you're in front of them. We have to record this, the audio. So I just wanted to, can you go into a little bit more detail of exactly what's going to go inside the barn, the processes, any machinery, equipment, noise factors, things like that? Come to, come to the mic then, Dave. I can share. You're not going to hear any more than you hear right now, except for maybe a heat pump or uh, an evaporator. Is it an evaporator or a condenser? I forget the part that's outside on the, on the side yard. What, um, what is that exactly? Uh, for air conditioning, you know, for heating and cooling, for the, the comfort of our is that clients. On the, the concrete equipment? Sorry, there? you can't, we can't have a back and forth from the audience. Yes. Sure, so on the south side of the barn, uh, the, the side yard, uh, customary to residential properties, et cetera, um, you know, we need to place HVAC equipment. Um, this will all be right customary and mm -hmm. scale and size uh, to a structure of this size uh, that we're actually surrounded by in the area. Um, and again, we're installing the, the photovoltaics to reduce that energy consumption and to meet the initiatives and mandates of the state. Uh, matter of fact, we're applying for some grant programs. Uh, we're also working with Recharge, uh, which is like a renewable uh, energy sourced program. Uh, you get in, we can get a hydro electric produced stuff. So we're really trying to meet, you know, these energy initiatives. Uh, as, I, as I explained, there's going to be tincturing, oil infusion, uh, pressing. Actually, one of the, the major uh, extractions we want to use uh, is actually water these days, where you can wash the resins off. Um, and all of these things, you know, these, this is not uh, a welding shop with a big outdoor rig, trucks backing up all day. Um, as it was shared by somebody else here, we're actually reducing the out structures. Uh, we're, we're making <coughs> the place more aesthetically pleasing from curb appeal, and we're looking to aggregate our use under one roof. L let it be known, um, I'm usually very private with these things, but there's been an intergenerational exchange of this property. 
And so this is now my time to reorganize this into a viable and streamlined entity where mm -hmm. I've been scrambling between regulations and family. I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> but at this point, it's my goal to simplify this. I think I've already said this before, yeah. to a streamlined, under one roof operation. And also keep in mind, in the back of the building, there's about a back one third that's broke up into two chunks. That's still supporting uh, you know, our straight ag stuff. You know, so I mean, there, there is a complete balance here of uh, production. Agri you know, we're not abandoning agricultural use. You know, we're just growing crops and we're bringing them in this space in a form into which they can be brought to market. Mm -hmm. uh, and without that use, uh, there is no viability in my farm. So, okay. um, so can you say that the processing equipment is not going to generate noise outside the barn? And is it, I think his concern is mechanical, industrial type equipment. I, I, I would imagine, I mean, we're going to spray foam this building with inches of spray foam, you know, to create an envelope. Uh, I, I would imagine the, the heat pumps would, at that point, make more noise. Uh, than something else. Uh, maybe for OSHA standards, there may be some reason to vent something uh, in case of some emergency. I have no idea. Uh, but it's not like I'm expecting things to be running on the external walls and venting daily. You know, this is everything's meant to operate inside of a climate controlled structure. So the heat pumps are inside? Well, think in, in, in your home uh, or, or traditional design of a home. We have a house, an insulated structure. Uh, we have an air handler that forces cool air in the house, but outside there's a, usually a unit, Compressor, you know, yeah. about yay large. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, depending on the size of the house and the calculated loads, you know, you need to have a couple of those and depending on the zones. Uh, in the case, sometimes there are uh, mini splits that are used where some of these are smaller. Uh, but again, it's, it's not my intention to line the whole side yard with all this mechanical. I want everything inside. I, I too want an aesthetically pleasing uh, operation um, that makes peace, you know, with my neighborhood. Okay. It's a, I mean, it's a, an industry that's still right in its infancy, right? So you have an opportunity here to be um, a standard bearer in a sense um, uh, on the East End, not only, you know, uh, doing responsible farming, but also doing it in a very neighborly fashion. We, so I appreciate the fact that you're so open to all of these things. And I, I fully understand your neighbor's concern, how you know they, they may be a little bit freaked out. So, um, you know, so if you can continue to dialogue and educate, I think you'd not only be doing a, a, a service to yourself, but other farmers like you. I'm, I'm continually doing that. You know, I've been working vicariously with Suffolk County Department of Labor through Body Cannon and their efforts over their development center. Um, we're very much looking for ways to incubate jobs, create generational wealth to give people good paying jobs that can afford them to stay maybe in their legacy homes or dare say possibly purchase one. So um, I am very much entrenched in, in educating uh, my community. I think uh, I've watched a meeting or two. I've even been referenced uh, in Southampton Town and Riverhead. Uh, I am very much capable of switching hats if you need me to be absolutely objective and help get your resources so you understand the same guidance that I'm working off of. But I'll say this, switching the hat back to Farmer Dave, a third generation farmer, my daughter's a fourth, that you know what I'm proposing really is modern, really is energy efficient, and really is one of the best situated projects for, for where we are you know, moving forward. Um, we have big plans also, uh, just rest in peace. Uh, the new eight acres I have to the north, really, where we're looking to bring in, you know, uh, edible forestry and, you know, some more permanent stuff where we want to reduce the amount of tillage, where we're looking to implement regenerative agriculture. But just know at this time, this is the <coughs> crop that's, that's paying for my bills, and without that, that future is not possible. There, there have been issues with, for example, uh, roasting coffee and the odor problems associated with that. Are you cooking this? Are you roasting no. this? Are you... Um, there, there should really be no associated smells of that level. I mean, I, I am familiar with a couple uh, coffee roasters. I mean, in gross, they're, they're filling the whole neighborhood with this. Now, I would imagine at any time should we deem some sort of process that needed some sort of remediation. There are very simple carbon filters that can mm -hmm. alleviate uh, venting. Really, okay. just you know, the largest noxious event occurs with the cultivation of outdoor cannabis which 
It's the outdoor growing. Is outdoor. Yeah. There, there are ways to put it indoors. Uh, there are Oops. very, <clears throat> that's not going to remediate it. Really, mm. you need sealed structures um, that are sealed because as soon as you vent, it's like a coffee roaster. Yeah. Mm, They're roasting yeah. and you're going to burp this gas. There are long term solutions. I'm actively working on them. Um, you know, I do sit as uh, the former Long Island Committee Chairman for the New York Cannabis Growers Processor Association. Uh, we rebranded as Canny. I am now uh, the policy co-chair. I also sit on their Manufacturing and Processing Committee. Uh, I also sit on the, the Cannabis and Hemp Work Group for New York State Farm Bureau. Uh, so I'm very much at the core of many of these conversations, and I'm bringing many of these modern and current resolutions to table today. Great. Very interesting. Thank, Thank you, you very you, much Dave. for your Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anyone in Zoom? Yeah, there is. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes we yep. can. Great. Hi, my name is Eric Fry, the owner of 594 Butter Lane. I've been the owner of that property for 16 years. The first I heard about this project was 10 o'clock this morning, so I apologize that I can't be there in person. I did not receive the email at my home on Butter Lane. I can tell you, though, that when I'm at Butter Lane, the stench from the Oakland Organics farm and the hemp that's grown there is extremely strong. I have two questions tonight. First, I was just curious why the public hearing for phase one was waived. And second, reiterating one of the points that uh, an earlier panelist made, we need more information here. I mean, how much more hemp is going to be processed than is being processed today? by open-minded organics. The size of the barn, at least from what I can ferret out from the earlier discussions, is materially bigger than the, what's called the, the, this portable structure where it's being done today. It sounds like it's very much larger. So does that mean that, you know, the volume of hemp that's going to be grown is going to increase significantly? So I think there's many issues that really need to be understood here. And I don't think we have the information or we can give them proper notice. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Carl, you want to I think I need to speak on the notice provision. Yeah. All notice provisions pursuant to the code were followed. I think your council will agree. So I think it needs to be clarified that proper notice was issued to all required participants, and the property has been posted for the last 10 days. Good. Thank Can you. you also verify, because I was trying to look on here, the office trailer that's currently being used for hemp processing compared to the size of the processing space in the existing barn, which is bigger, what is the difference in size of the processing space, just so that we can address the comment that was made? Sure, I don't, maybe Ben, would you, or? Because I know the barn is bigger, but the actual processing the is space is within <coughs> that. Is it a large difference? In, in so just size? to speak generally of the transition from a small space that we are very much shoehorned in. Sure. Uh, we, there's a refrigerator <coughs> unit that is also an accessory storage unit to that processing, and also those three other outbuildings. So when you aggregate all of that together, uh, when you take into fact we're going to have an employee storage area, a formal bathroom. I spend $700 a month for a headquarters with washing stations. So there are many uses and utilitarian things that are being put under the roof in this structure. And again, the back third, as you can see where it's partitioned, is still our tractor shop and storage. Equipment. You have equipment and, of, and then you have a warehouse. And this is very much just factory. giving us room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whereas right now there's a small little panel. I mean, we're going to be putting photovoltaics. They're going to they're gonna need room to have the batteries and the panels. We're going to be hooking up to municipal water, right, which is a, which is a big goal uh, for municipalities as well. And these things take space. So sure, there's, there's an increase in capacity, but really it's really all relative to a lot of the things that we're now I'm cleaning up now that I have the property. I can put this all under one roof uh, and, and make it more streamlined, aesthetic, and pleasing to the community at large. 
Yeah, and I guess, I mean, the intention of my question is to, obviously it's a charged issue, and um, this particular comment comes down to math, right? Sure. What, uh, is, the, <laughs> what is the difference in the square footage of the so processing space? Looks like 50% of this new barn building will be for processing. Yeah, the and other 50 is storage and farm, uh, warehouse and farm equipment. Yeah. So and it's the 50%. Does that equal what you've got? Yeah, and, and, and no, this, this is an existing building. You know, the mm -hmm. only addition really is an overhang out front so people don't have to wait out in the rain to access the building. Um, and the storage side, like we're already using <coughs> that length of the barn for storage. It's just not insulated and climate controlled. So, um, so when you take 500 square feet, 20 by 8, you're probably just over a thousand square feet um, of what is that office trailer. Then we got the, the reefer units, another several hundred. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got a pen and paper. So eight by 40, 320? Yeah. 21 by 8? 21 by 8? 168. 168. The uh, 500? You do it. Mm -hmm. 20 by 8, you got another 160. Yeah. Um, the, uh, we've got the bathroom <laughs> outside, that's 8 by 8. You know, the, the employee uh, rest area is under trees outside. It's a couple hundred square feet right there. It's literally wooden picnic tables. You know, I mean, their storage is literally just that. What's the size of this processing area here? Do we have a four point? Yeah. So that's about 700 square feet, everything that you talked about. Right. Well, no, 320, 160, so 320, 160, 160, 160 16. We don't have uh, dimensions. So each one of those posts is seven and a half feet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times seven and a half? 45. One, two, three, four, five, six times seven and a half? 45. And so that's the the space of this this processing area in you know yeah it's might i suggest another way to look at this um, how many acres are you now cultivating with them and how many do you plan to cultivate after you have this new barn i plan to continue to cultivate about what we have uh, historically in the past and as as i had stated earlier here you know it is my goal as this industry rolls out, um, myself or other people who will come before you are going to seek applications <coughs> or just used to bring these indoor, but we have to get to that point so we can actually find the resolve to many of these issues that are being brought forth today. These are all excellent points um, and we're all working towards resolve on that, but we need to have the good players at the table uh, who are willing to keep open dialogues and, and, do, the, and do the work. Do you have mature plants growing right now? You haven't harvested? Uh, yeah. Actually, as of the la the other day, every last plant has been harvested out of the ground. Okay. Now, again, I cannot speak for other cultivators in the area, whether they are hemp or adult-use marijuana. Yeah. Um, you know, again, we've got you know massive greenhouse on the other side, fields over there. Mm -hmm. uh, heck, they, they grew considerably more hemp last year than I did. So, you know, this is a larger thing than just this one project. We're bringing mm -hmm. up great issues, and I'm starting to bring some resolution to table. Yeah, the fact that you're on the council uh, is We great. discuss these things day in and day yeah. out. We're very much aware of them, right. but without bringing resolve, we, we're not going to be able to move it forward. And mm -hmm. if we don't have viability amongst farmers, uh, the program's a no-go. Good. Yeah. You should share whatever information, share your information with us. When you grow grow the marijuana inside, it's incredibly um, electricity intensive because you need special grow lights. And we have challenges with our, our electric out here. So, so it's a balance. So that, that's actually a misnomer. Um, there is a reality that uh, indoor cultivation uh, produces high quality cannabis flower. Uh, reduces the, the need for inputs, pesticides, because you can control the environment. Uh, but what I had alluded to, which is in the future, you know, as the farmers get a foothold and the industry rolls out, there are literally next generation structures that uh, use mixed light uh, and actually can, with proper design, these, these systems exist. And it's, it's on the books in the future, we'll see what happens. 
where they, they use 20% of the current use, uh, where through proper passive solar design, uh, reflective materials, geothermal, um, the nature of the glazing, you actually get more natural sunlight into these grow chambers than you would if it was a traditional greenhouse. So there's very much a bright future on the horizon that will remediate many of the concerns that are being brought up today. We, we just have to take one step in front of the other to get to that solution. Because uh, that too is going to take time and money, but I can assure you there, there are very smart and motivated people who are very aware of these issues and we're, we're actively working on it. Okay, thank you. Are, are there any thank more you. people in the Zoom room? Yeah, one more. Sorry, it's, uh, it's Eric. I just, just to follow up, I was just curious. So if the volume of the crop is not going to increase, what is the need for having eight parking spots for employees? I just, I'm just not clear as to, I, I just, it seems like the size of the processing, again, you guys lost me in the numbers, and this is why we need to have more time to understand what's happening here, to Tom's earlier point, but, I don't know if, you, if you're not going to increase the volume, I'm not sure why we need more, eight more parking spots. But again, we don't need to answer this tonight. I think what we need to do is really research this and understand what's happening here. Again, I didn't, no one answered my first question, which is the public hearing for phase one was waived. Okay. Um, Carl? The, the parking is just being formalized. We're not adding any additional parking. We're just showing them because this is the first site plan it's at. So right now, the employees just haphazard, they just exactly. park. Exactly, yeah, exactly. They're, they're actually so probably parking where. Okay, so you're not expecting <coughs> to have eight more employees than you have now, or some or any more employees than you have now? I'm expecting to make. Where do they park now? Right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Sure. And, and you raise a good point, right? I, at first glance, I would see this. Um, we're formalizing the parking. We went off of calculations based on having a farm stand uh, and, a, uh, and a, an agricultural operation. Um, so these are just <coughs> formalizing. Trust me, I'm quite content to not formalize them, but it's part no, of it's the, the planning plan. process. No, I, I'm not necessarily expecting more employees, but actually what I'm hoping to do is carry my employees year-round. I, I know your jobs up here, whether on a paid or volunteer basis, are very difficult, but I, I don't know if you could imagine literally having to hire and retrain people every six months. And mm -hmm. it's one of my goals to add stability to my organization. And as to the space, we're literally busting at the seams. I'm literally taking things in and out of storage and moving and shuffling. It's, it's literally, even though you see a physical space, and you're like, well, why do you need more? I mean, literally sometimes you just need more wiggle room because you're, you're sh so short up in a space uh, to, to safely and, and efficiently operate. While you're up there, Dave, could you just describe what, you, what was accomplished in phase one and the time constraint you had on that? Yeah, so what it basically, licenses were expiring and license applications were opening in the state and we needed to make sure that the local municipality was aware of what was going on and that we're in the process of all of these things. So what did you do in phase one? What, what, what? Uh, phase one was really the authorization saying the temporary use of this trailer until we make it in phase two and we complete this project and removing uh, what was a contentious trailer, which was our food truck, which never even opened this year. So oh. that is off of the property at the moment and uh, it's for sale. So it was just temporary use of the trailers so you could secure your license and now you're in phase two, you want to get everything into the barn. Correct. I want to make it all look nice and neat, just like my eight-year-old daughter room when I dream at night. <laughs> and you removed one trailer as part of phase yep. one. Yeah, because yeah. that one, again, that was a use that was ceased last September. Food I was truck. just like, hey, let's yeah. remove that so it's not, uh, doesn't need to become a subject <coughs> of debate. The other three structures, like I said, those are very, those are storage structures that, you know, facilitate the, the work uh, in, in, the, in the trailer. And so that's how all of those can go. Once we have a clean, climate-controlled space, we have more room to be a bit more organized, mm -hmm. uh, that, that stuff can go away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Carl? Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I would also know with respect to waiving the hearing, that was the request of the applicant that this board considered on the representation that it was going to be temporary. <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. And this hearing is for the permanent and ongoing use. Great. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Here, you know, I think we're going to have to close that we have lots of other applications. Uh, uh, Mr. Thank you. Addison, thank you. You can do a third. We're going to have a, I'm going to close this with a 30 day written comment period. So you've got 30 days and you can speak to Dave as well. So motion to close with motion. a 30 day by Second. Craig. Second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions? Six in favor? One absent. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Dave. So no, no, we I'll, have. I'll, I'll, I'll you got to go outside. Come on. Coastal, coastal vision. Are we taking these together, Anthony? Yeah, do both of them. And Brennan's got the, the board and the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No one. No one. <laughs> <laughs> they know where the fire is. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Huh, the old man. Yeah. 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 Uh, we want to just um, now. We'll do the reading so, uh, do we have notice, Council? We do, Madam Chair. We do. Um, who's reading? Coastal? Coastal you Vision 1. To? Okay, yeah. Tom. And then read one after the other. Okay. Please take notice that in accordance with local law number 417 of 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, October 13, 2022, at 6 p.m. at Town Hall. 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and via video conferencing to consider the pre-application entitled Coastal Vision 1 LLC. The application proposes a standard subdivision, parentheses, yield plan with a total of seven lots, preliminary plan with a yield of six lots, and a park area, a density incentive standard plan with eight lots, a reduced density cluster plan with six lots, and open space representing 25% of the area of the lot. And a density incentive cluster plan with eight lots and open space representing 25% of the area of the lot on a vacant parcel totaling 3.81 acres, including areas of proposed road abandonments within the R20 zoning district on the north side of Old Country Road and south of the Long Island Railroad tracks located at 48 Old Country Road, East Quag, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-289-2-10. So that's Coastal Vision 1? That's mm -hmm. Coastal Vision 1. Okay. You can, can you read Coastal sure. Vision 2? Please take notice that in accordance with local law number 417 of 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, October 13, 2022 at 6 p.m. at Town Hall, 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and video video conferencing to consider the pre-application entitled Coastal Vision 2 LLC. The application proposes a standard subdivision yield plan with a total of 11 lots, a reduced density preliminary plan with 10 lots, and a park area a density incentive standard plan with 12 lots, a reduced density cluster plan with 10 lots, an open space representing 25% area of the area of the lot, and a density incentive cluster plan with 12 lots, an open space representing 25% of the area of the lot, on a vacant parcel totaling 6.53 acres, including areas of proposed road abandonments within the R20 zoning district on the north side of Old Country Road, and south of the LIRR tracks, located at 38 Old Country Road, East Quag, Suffolk County Tax Map number 900 289 2 11. Thank you, Tom. Randall White Road for the applicant, 144 West Main Street, Bayshore. Uh, the call of the, of the meeting for both of these is accurate. It really isn't much more that I can add to them. Uh, these maps, um, Anthony and I have worked on for probably about eight or nine months, just making sure that they conform to the town code, take advantage of every town code provision, and meet the standards. Um, we're really here looking just really as an as of right and direction from the board, which map you would prefer. If you would like us to pursue an increased density map, we would, uh, if the town board or, or this board would be willing to add a parcel for development right. It's not something we're looking to do. We don't really want to go through that process with the Board of Review with the Health Department. Um, I think the preferred map uh, for the applicant is the reduced density with the open space. And I think you'll probably find that to be the better one of the, of the five uh, on each of these. Um, 
but again, it really opened up for your comment and the public's uh, you know, comment and feedback. What is the Can number I ask, of are, they, are these properties contiguous to each other? They are. What are the, the number of lots? Um, of, is there a reason why you? we're looking at them separately? I can answer that question. Um, because it's a pre-application, um, ultimately you will look at one subdivision, a uh, final subdivision that will include you know everything. But uh, the town code allows um, uh, for yield to be established on the properties separately. Um, so we normally then bring the application in for the two properties, and part of my review will include looking at the totality of this as, as one subdivision ultimately. Um, so it's really just for the purposes of establishing yield at the pre-application stage. Okay. What is the number of lots that triggers the workforce housing? So the number of lots is uh, five. Once, you, right. once you're at five, then you have to provide a density incentive. So with this, I'll just, just to help out a little bit because I sat with, with Randy mm -hmm. many times. I made, in other words, with the yield, for example. I said, show me a yield for each property. Um, and then show a second map, basically, with the park area. Um, because if, if you do require an on-site park for this subdivision, then it comes out of the yield. If you don't, if, in other words, if they pay in lieu of, uh, then they could uh, eliminate the park and, and use that yield. So I, I don't know that we would do a park here, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do all that. Um, and then I made them give some alternative plans. Show me a plan with uh, a, a standard plan and a cluster in both scenarios, with, without the density incentive and with the density uh, right. incentive. So all of the application, yeah, variations. Yeah, and, and really just so I to make sure we had the, the maps, this is just going to require like a, <laughs> an analysis and, mm -hmm. um, but that, that's, that's why we did it this way, so we could, you know, look at two properties and, and I'll, you know, mm -hmm. figure out the yield. But they're, they're required to do density incentive. You seem to, or Andy seemed to suggest it's an option, but it's not an option. No, but I think provided the map is a requirement, yeah, but we're not pushing that particular map. Uh, you don't have a choice. Well, no. no. He, what he's saying is the applicant will still do, in other words, if this yield for this property is, uh, 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 seven lots, and then, so let's say we establish a yield of seven lots, <clears throat> we would typically have to say you get eight. Um, in order to, and, and and free, you know, and so they could do the affordable. What I think you were saying was that they'll still do their affordable requirement. In other words, provide the ten percent, but without the density um, incentive. Right. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. I'm sorry. Right. We're not looking to add the other lot so we can make it affordable. Okay. We're just so using the current one of those lots yeah. out of your yield. Yeah. No, no, this will be reconfigured. Well, yeah. I know, well, that as the example. Yeah. You wouldn't reduce reduce the size of each lot to get the extra density in there. Is that what you're no, because you, the, it's automatic, so they don't have to show a yield map that shows the extra. In other words, their yield map says seven, and then we say, okay, that's accurate. Yeah, yeah. The law requires that we give you ten percent, so we say you get eight uh, lots. They don't have to. They don't have to show it on the yield map, mm -hmm. but their subdivision map that they ultimately move forward with would have to show the eight lots and with the affordable. What, like I said, with the discussion I have with the applicant, I think that some of the concerns with doing the density bonus uh, relies in health department. Um, mm -hmm. issues um, and flow and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So then the question becomes, is it worth transferring in and doing this for the, you know, affordable Plus people? all the result remaining lots become smaller. They do, and I don't know that the community would lend a support for that too. So we're not, you know, East Quag has had its fair share of uh, uh, battles, so yeah. I think. But you can see the two lots, of the, the two immediately adjacent to the mobile home park. Yeah. One's in red and the other one is not. And it's next to the town, too. Is there a town yes. parcel yeah. behind yes. it? Right, right next to it, right? Oh, behind it. No, right it's next big, to it. I have uh, to remember. Actually. Yeah, right to the, to, the, to the east. To the east, and what's to the south then, that big? That was also owned by the applicant, but it was just purchased by uh, Discovery Land Company. Oh. We have a subdivision application for that piece. What's it called? Yes, we do. Uh, Runs along the East Side Avenue, right? Something East Quag. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> well, it run, it run, it's expired. So where? 7 Eleven. Yeah. Runs east, east End Avenue. Because I think there's a farm, uh, uh, like farm a, stand. a farm stand on yeah. the yes. property. Where's this relation to that large um, workforce housing application that's before the town? Cleon? Is it? That's why. No, that's East. That's right. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so yeah that different ones by stress. So, can they pay into a fund if they don't want to build the affordable housing? 
That's an option. I don't think the applicant's saying they won't do it. And I'm, and I'm going to, by the way, I'm not going to, the analysis will include what they're allowed under the law. If the law says they're allowed eight, we're going to, you know, I don't want them to just throw out, you know, mm -hmm. especially, you know, when you start number crunching nowadays or what it costs per square foot <coughs> the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I'm going to provide all the options okay. um, for this. Um, and then I'll dabble around with some design myself. This also includes road abandonments, by the way, on, on uh, the map. You'll see some, um, some paper roads that, that, that are included. Um, are you keeping the ownership separate? Um, or are you merging them? They will merge, ultimately. Yeah, because, the, again, the town code specifically talks about the clustering, uh, cluster subdivisions uh, with parcels uh, that are not necessarily even adjacent to each other. And you can actually you know, do that. I'm looking at one right now. But um, um, uh, this, they just happen to be next to each other. So ultimately, it'll be a single lot. You know, we'll cluster and do the open space. Um, obviously, we'll go through the CEQA, uh, mm -hmm. you know, requirements for this. Okay. Um, any other, any questions from the board? Mm -hmm. no. Is there anyone in Zoom? No one on Zoom. No one on Zoom. Okay, so separate resolutions. Separate for resolutions for each, Anthony. Yeah. So uh, let's co close the Coastal Vision Number One with a 10-day written comment period. Motion. Motion by Craig, second by Kate. Kate, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Six in favor, one absent. Coastal Vision Two. Close with a 10-day written comment period. Motion by Dennis, second by uh, Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six in favor, one absent. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Craig. Stay well. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Craig. Second by Dennis. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Abstention. Six in favor. We are adjourned. Remember, the 20th by Zoom, you'll be getting a Zoom link.